Well, hello. Welcome to worship, online worship for Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. Yeah. Um, this is the second Sunday of Christmas. That is what this Sunday is. Uh, I do have one quick announcement here. Um, please, as you can see some in my video, there are poinsettias all around me uh, here in the sanctuary. And uh, Terry, our office, uh, our office manager, our church, uh, church manager, um, would like you to know that if you ordered a poinsettia, to please come and pick them up. Uh, you can get them this Sunday right after worship, or you can get them between, on Monday between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Those would be ideal for us. That's what you'd like us, like you to know. So if you have a poinsettia, please come and snag them. I have been watering them a little bit, uh, so they should be okay for, for that time. But uh, yeah, you should come and get them. So that is what I know. Uh, the, the order of service will be linked both in Facebook and on the YouTube page. Uh, in, in the description if you'd like to follow along, but I will also put the cues up on the screen uh, for your responses. Okay, let us take a moment now to prepare ourselves for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, let us take a moment for silent confection and, uh, yes. Now let us confess our sins in the presence out loud, in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I have good news for you. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's own authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Redeemer, you, re you created light that we might live, and you illumine our world with your beloved Son. By your Spirit, comfort us in all darkness, and turn us towards the light of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Jeremiah in the 31st chapter. 
Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth and among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company and they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. They shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain and the wine and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the land. Their life shall become like a watered garden. They shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice and dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them. I will give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Our second reading comes from Ephesians in the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in, in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to that praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through the blood through his blood, <clears throat> the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us mystery, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and on earth, and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purposes of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, you were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance according uh, towards the redemption of God's own people to praise of his to the praise of his glory. Thus ends our second reading. Our, our third reading is our gospel reading, and you'll probably recognize this uh, from Christmas worship. And it is it, in fact it is John in the first chapter. It is instead of the first 14 verses, which we did for Christmas, it is the first 18 verses. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. The life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Now he, that light, was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. 
and the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because, of he, was, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God and it is God, the only Son, who is close to, close to the Father's heart, who has made him known as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Here ends our readings. Thanks be to Christ. So my prayer today is that the Holy Spirit uses me so that you who are watching and listening online can hear the Lord's promise for you today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I have a stack here of, what is this? These are thank you notes. These are little thank you cards. I Where did I get these from? Um, I got these from my desk. I have this growing pile of papers which are really like things to read and and like mini projects to do that um, for whatever reason for good or for bad they never seem I never seem to to sort of get to them which is sort of concerning right like I haven't I've only been here since what mid-November I'm already sort of making this collection and I'm, I'm spending some time to fight it spending some time to look at it to like like prioritize some of that stuff or to really look at it and say, yeah, I really, um, I'm not going to have capacity to do that and accept that, right? But I have these and the reason why I brought these and what these are for is that, I don't know, um, when my, you know, when I completed seminary and when I was ordained uh, and then installed here, I just, I mean, a lot of folks were so generous. A lot of people in my life sent gifts, and you know, they sent they sent gratitude, you know, notes of celebration to me. But some some folks sent gifts, and you know, this the sort of also continued in Christmas that people had had given me gifts, and 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 I certainly had given gifts as well, but had given gifts, um, had given gifts, and and you know, I don't know, like especially in this time, like things had been financially tight, and so. Um, I wanted, you know, I wanted to show great gratitude, and so how I did, I figured some handwritten thank you notes, like old school handwritten thank you notes, and I'm like, I'm going to do this. Well, folks, it is, um, I don't know, it is, what, been uh, pushing two months, pretty close to two months since ordination, and much longer since graduation for me, and uh, I should probably get to these notes, right? And, it, you know, for Christmas, you know, Christmas is over, right? So. Um, I should be getting to, to those thank you notes out as well, right? If I'm really going to do this, right, I should really, I should really get to this. Well, this project, this, this, this failed project of mine, this project that I'm unsure um, how and when I'm going to get to, uh, reminds me of our second reading today from Ephesians. I want to describe <coughs> this this reading, and first I want to note something about it, okay? If you take a look at it, if you want to take out your, and I'm going to flip back to mine here, if you want to take a look at it, so I'm looking at at the order of service, and I went through and I counted, and these, what, uh, 11, 12 verses here, I'm counted five sentences, right? So 12 verses, five sentences, there's a lot of sort of run-on run sentences in this thing. Right? But what's interesting is that in the Greek, in the original language, the author of Ephesians wrote this Thanksgiving section, right? And this is intentional, this is part of the structure of Greco-Roman letter writing, right? Wrote this section as one single sentence. One sentence. 
So it's like we get five in our translation, the translation that we use, which is the News Revised Standard Version. I, there are other faithful translations out there that organize these verses differently in different sentences. And when you organize them differently, you sort of get different emphases and different points um, than our translation from today. And, that, and those are all faithful and those are all good. I wanted to maybe, since these, a lot of these letters when they were written weren't written necessarily for, for us to read and contemplate. That's how we deal with our Bible today. But they were meant to be heard out loud, right? And so I did read it. I read it a moment ago, but I want to read it again. And I want to read it in my best attempt at one long run-on sentence, okay? I want to do my best to do that. I've set this up here to help me to help me do that. I'm going to read it to you as, as the author wrote it, maybe as the author intended it, as this sort of breathless expression, okay? Are you ready? Take a deep breath. Blessed be, best, blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, who has, blessed, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, and he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved, and in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace he has lavished on us, and with all the wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he has set forth in Christ as the plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. And in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who, who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. And in him you also uh, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, you had believed in him. You were marked with the seal of the promise of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance or the redemption as God's own people to praise of his glory. Whew. All right. Uh, I said five sentences as I was reading this. It was actually six. <laughs> All right. What was that like, right? I don't know. I don't know if you caught any or most of what the content of what's being said here. You knew, he, hopefully you heard that he was talking about her God and Jesus mentioned a lot in there. He was talking about that and like praising and glory and the things that he's done for us, right? Maybe that's what you think. Like, like this run on sentence, right? That we would probably divide in five or six sentences. This is more poetry than exact doctrine. And really, it is more, more the breathless excitement of someone overwhelmed with gratefulness and surprise and excitement and joy. They are truly, if you read this out loud, you would truly be breathless. And the reality is, I think, if I, if I could put my, 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 my 2021 uh, self into the mind of an ancient from 2,000 years ago, the writer of Ephesians wants us to be breathless, assumes we should be breathless, and maybe even expects us to be breathless. So the question is, of course, when you have an assumption and you have an expectation, the question is, do you measure up? Are you breathless with that kind of excitement and gratitude right now? Are you, are you? I have a confession. I don't think I am, not really, no. I mean, if you take my inability, now I should say that I've thanked people for their gifts, but I wanted to write personalized notes here. I'm now just justifying myself, right? That isn't gonna work, right? I, I, I am, I am personally no more feeling that breathlessness or that overwhelming excitement uh, about this uh, 
than I was before. Except to say that maybe, you know, I am a little bit more breathless in this moment because of the way I chose to read that reading just now. Anyway, reality is why should, why would I be? Why would any of us be overly excited? In the culture in the U.S., the culture that we live in here in the United States, where our, our congregation, uh, you know, is part of a, a, a municipality or a township in, 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 in the United States, in a county, in a state of Wisconsin, in the United States, right? In our culture here, in the U.S. culture, the holidays are over. New Year's Eve has broken into New Year's Day, and we are in the third day of the year. It is January 3rd. That's what this worship is for. I'm actually recording this before then, but it is after, even now. It is after New Year's. The holidays are over. And the holidays, the, the holidays, were, I, at least in my opinion, weren't that great this year. Um, I mean, I certainly had a memory of a lifetime uh, doing Christmas Eve at 7 p.m. in really, really cold weather out in a little ice shanty out in the, in the parking lot. And so I will take that memory with joy. And I'm not joking. That was amusing to me. Um, but they weren't that great this year. I certainly did not have the festive opportunities to carouse and celebrate like I usually do for these things. I usually get to see my people. So, breathless? No. And really, why should we be so excited? And if I think about our church instead of our neighbor's culture, right? We are done with the big festival of the year, right? Already. Like the beginning of our year uh, caps off after, after, what, four or five weeks, right? Right away. And it's Christmas. And right, Christmas is over. It's over. wrong. You see, in their wisdom, our ancestors in the faith organized our church culture and our church calendar so that, that this is the second Sunday after Christmas. Really, I want to say that differently. Really, this is the second Sunday of Christmas. Christmas is still going. It would be fair to wonder Actually, if we if we really deeply think about it, if Christmas ever really ends. I mean, let me ask you some questions. Has a manual stopped being a manual? Let me say that in English, right? Instead of using Hebrew and Greek words. The point of Christmas is a manual, and a manual means God with us, right? So, has God stopped being with us? Has your washing and baptism been undone for those of you who have been baptized? Has the gospel promise heard in preaching been withdrawn? Has the body of Christ been ripped out of your body? And has the blood of Christ been siphoned back? Even think of it this way. Is it too late to hear the gospel promise in preaching through the Holy Spirit? Or to receive the drowning of mere death and receiving instead eternal life in the resurrection through baptism, or forgiveness of sins now and forever through communion, or in any other way our Lord decides to claim his chosen like us? Is it too late? No. Those tragedies uh, that, that I imagined just a moment ago of all, these, all the gospel being taken back have not happened. And it's certainly not too late to be claimed by our Lord. And since it is not too late, and the Holy Spirit remains active and working in this weary world, Christmas is still going and will keep going until the resurrection at the end is complete. So my siblings, it is not too late, and it may never be too late to be breathlessly grateful and overwhelmed and agitated and excited about what the Lord has done. It just may never be. And yes, I will say this, it is right and proper that you and I show, show that gratitude. And it is a fine value to have and it's a fine thing to do and you should do it and I should do it too. That clearly is the law and expectation here. But, even if you do not feel gratitude or show gratitude for your salvation, 
And maybe you don't because of your hard heart or your selfish sin, or maybe, I don't know, the world is hard right now and you have lots of pain, right? No matter the reason, you being ungrateful is forgiven. You are free to be grateful and you are free to be ungrateful. And any lack of gratitude has been forgiven in the name of the one who has claimed you, despite your weaknesses and failings and wrongs and harms. You have been claimed by Emmanuel himself, God with us, our Christ Jesus. You know, uh, there is a Presbyterian pastor named James uh, McIntyre, and I believe I'm pronouncing his last name right, and he was thinking about our reading from Ephesians. And he sort of described his thinking in a series of questions like this, and I want to share those with you. This is what he said. He said, what plans do we have? What plans do our churches have in the coming year to live into the mystery of God's will? How do we propose to continue to write, say, and give thanks? How will we continue to share our spiritual, physical, and financial gifts? Will we live another year as people with possessions? Or will we live as people with gifts? I want to say that again. That's, that's I don't know, that really, that's really deep to me. That's really convicting to me. Will we live another year as people with possessions? Or will we live as people with gifts? Will we cautiously parcel out our gifts? Or will we heap them lavishly? just as God has given them to us. And this is, this here's the gospel. Mercifully, says this pastor, mercifully, even if we miss the opportunities of Christmas, there are always second Sundays, second chances to begin anew. Our lives can be grateful again. That's what he said. And I will add, and that is a promise. And I will also say, oh, Thank you, dear Lord, for those second Sundays. Amen. <clears throat> Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let us not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You bring, in, you bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate bounds from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. You embrace those who, fear, who feel far off, excluded or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness those who have blessings to celebrate, and even those who have hurt us in the past. We especially pray for Tom and Kathy Peterson and anyone that we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light, Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us, help us to honor your, your, honor your uh, image in one another. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. 
in the fullness of time, gather all together in your mercy during the resurrection. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly with, to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you, all the prayers known and unknown, all the prayers spoken and unspoken, and anything that is in your will. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now please, go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Take care.